Well, it, it's some deep thinking for a kid at 25 a long time ago, but uh, I suddenly realized I didn't have any professional goals. I had a job. I was an electrical engineer working at uh, the NACA's forerunner of NASA, their wind tunnel place. And, uh, but I suddenly wondered, hey, what kind of goals should I have for career? And then for some reason, within five minutes, what popped in my head was, what if I try to maximize the value my career has to mankind? Oh, that sounds good. I have no idea where it came from, but that steered me. And then I started looking to say, what, what kind of a career goals could I have that would do that? And uh, I almost exhausted myself looking at all the things. I began to call them crusades and realizing that that was very hard and, and uh, really very difficult. And so one day it just, uh, it just dawned on me, gee, you know, it's, it's very hard, tough, complex problems, and they have to be dealt with collectively, the big, tough problems. And uh, mankind isn't getting all that much more effective at collectively dealing with complex problems. Maybe that's what I could concentrate on. So that's what I committed to. I realized that if the computer is going to do this kind of help, there are a lot more things that are going to change in your environment than just you're using the computer. That the skills and the methods, the language you're going to use, the way you fit into an organizational structure, oh, lots of change are going to be. So you couldn't say that that computer is augmenting you in that new environment because it's both the changes in what I call the human system as well as the tool system that together they made a difference. So I realized, oh, that's what you could call augmenting. And then you realize that, hey, since the beginning of our known history, we've been augmenting ourselves with all kinds of tools, etc. And uh, how much did they change the world? Well, just think of what the plow did. You know, it's cultivation. People stopped being hunting, gathering, and settled on farms. The whole thing about property and and uh, housing and uh, villages and trade and you know just huge changes followed up in the what I call the human system. When I finally realized that that there's actually an infrastructure inside society that that special capability of improving different kinds of capabilities we have in society, and so the capability that I began to get more important than was this augmenting the human intellect in, in, a, in a collective way. So I ended up calling it boosting the collective IQ, which you can make it a real analogy to that. So how smart is any, any group of people to, to cope, to understand, to get a plan, to incorporate it, to handle its resources, etc. And uh, so that term means very meaningful to me. And uh, you're going to get more collective IQ by improving the augmentation system, of which there's a lot of potential. And so we talk about facilitating the evolution <laughs> because the complexity of that future is much greater than can be handled by any individual or organization as far as planning for how they ought to be in five years or ten years. Look, it's a combination of developing knowledge, integrating it, and applying it. I begin to think about the improvement process, etc., and then I realized, oh, um, probably every organization that was going to change has an explicit category of activities. That one of them is doing your everyday work, and the other one is improving your capability to do that work. And uh, so that, I just called them A and B. And uh, then within a few weeks I realized, well now wait a minute, things are changing very rapidly and the way you improve and how you decide which direction and changing what is something that's different, different from actually the improvement. So I finally said, you need a C kind of activity, too. So I start talking about a frontier out there. 
and that everybody's sort of sitting at a certain capability level and there's a capability frontier out there because the technology is booming ahead and all kinds of options for how you change your learning and your human system. So, hey, it's a whole unexplored frontier. But you look at this digital technology that's coming about and, and the kind of change it's going to make in the way we think and the way we communicate. And I don't mean that you can now communicate with email. <laughs> I mean the actual the symbols and the way you portray your thoughts to people. The computer has so much more flexibility in making dynamic things in color and three dimensions and moving, etc. that we, I'm just sure we're going to learn how to have some of the communication come from stored things in these very much more dynamic ways. Compared to where we were, we're going to go that far in all this capability. And I keep thinking that that's what I was thinking of then, and people then keep saying, okay, we're here, and we're here, and no, no, not there yet. And that's one of the things that's a perennial problem, is how do you get people the framework of how they perceive how you think and work and communicate, etc., to realize there could be a potential like that. And if there is, it would just be hugely important to society that it gets so we can understand what's happening better, and especially what we can understand of all the complexity that's charging down. So I just feel like it's a matter of survival for the human race <laughs> to really get better. Yes, well, I, I don't want to spoil it, but, but I feel uh, that it's um, kind of a rare thing when I get an audience that'll listen to me, see.